it, it's just a totally different type of people. But it's you know, whatever. It's I, I I think it's hilarious. I think it's funny. So, but they're they're passionate. Hey, I'll tell you something. Let, let me jump in for a sec. Yeah. Uh, as being a, a former veteran of that same kind of scene up there in Jersey, I miss those guys that come in with briefcases and the. Uh, you know, like the old style uh, guitar suitcase with some kind of random memorabilia, and I miss those guys. It's good. Like I love that. Like I, lo- I love um, you know the guys that whoop out like an original um, WrestleMania poster. You know that you can see visibly is thirty, forty years old. Like you can see how old these things are. Uh, that I love. Well, they, you know they they whip out a uh, an original program from a house show that's printed in black and white. It's just like stuff like that. I, I love I love that. I mean, anybody who can print out an eight by ten off Google and uh, go to the store and buy a pack of cards or, or whatever the case. But it's those unique things that uh, you you can see they really appreciate how they take care of things and the fact that they finally get to have it signed and just how much right. like gratification they get while it's being signed. Like the, the the grin on their face from ear to ear. Like they can't believe that. This is happening, and right in front of them, they're so happy, and that's that's what I like. You know, obviously making money, everybody wants to make money, but like if I, if there was anything that was a close second, that's the close second. Seeing the smiles and how people are get just react exactly. to the heroes. I mean, exactly. these these are heroes. Right. You know, I looked up to baseball players sure. and hockey players, and you know, I watched wrestling as a kid. I, I mean, I was a huge and still am a huge Randy Savage mark, but. You know, I met him a couple of times. I probably was ear to ear with the big shit grin on my face, but I was also like eight. So, <laughs> you know, these are like fifty-year-old, you know, men and women who are meeting their hero for the first time, and they and they feel like they're eight. So, I mean, that's yeah, that's that's a that's a great thing. Like that's why I feel like a lot of times when a lot of negative shit happens in this industry, which there there is a lot of negative stuff that goes on. And that that I like to, sometimes I just like to step back and remember those moments. You know, remember the yeah. You know, the now, you're mo- right. You're right, Kevin. Now let me let if you don't mind, let me just say this one thing yeah. too. And that's kind of where that's what I want to target with the people we want to bring into the show is mm-hmm. those collectors that you're talking about that may have that piece that they don't want to lug all the way to Manhattan. Mm-hmm. And since we're doing a little bit of a wrestling and football theme. You know, why don't they uh, stop by and uh, put together the West Texas State football team that we're going to, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, kind of unveil here uh, slowly but surely. But you know what I mean? It's something that we're trying to offer as the alternative. And maybe those collectors that have that awesome stuff that you haven't seen, maybe, just maybe, they're the ones that we're going to appeal to. So that's kind of where I'm going to lay my hat. No, I I understand that. Say, look, everybody's everybody's entitled – to attempt something to make money. You know, everybody's entitled to business. As long as nobody's screwing nobody else, there's, you know, there shouldn't be no problems with it. You know, my my only, you know, my question is just like, you know, my, my big question was the whole, if WrestleCon couldn't do it on Sunday, you know, what's, what makes you think you guys can do it on your own at, on a smaller scale? Because... There's so much going on. I mean, I, I, I made a quick list. You know, just in 2019 alone, you have big event that's running the March right before WrestleMania. Uh, they run twice a year. You have Legends of the Ring that runs twice a year. You have New York City Comic Con. You have Icons of Wrestling twice a year. Chilla Theater twice a year. You have Exoticon that runs and you also you forgot to show Mohegan that uh, Steve from here to find out. Well, I'm just trying to focus in the New York, New Jersey market. You know, oh, okay. I okay. mean, you can also sure. say the gathering in North Carolina, but I mean, just you know, I'm just trying to stay in the New York, New Jersey market. And then you know, if you want to extend it a little, you could throw you know the second edition of Boardwalk Beatdown and that that I know Chad is going to try to uh, put together. So I mean, <laughs> so I mean, you got one, two, and then of course you got WrestleCon in April, and then you guys in April, like. Do you feel maybe it's like it's overkill at this point? Um, well, I guess that's really for the consumers to decide, to be honest. Uh, I, 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 w- I wouldn't be throwing away money if I knew I was going to lose it. 
So getting into this venture is, is in no way to lose money. Obviously, right. my goal isn't to, to make a killing because I wouldn't be doing this on the side. I'm sure I could find a lot of other things to make more money doing on the side. Right. But at the same time, I feel like this isn't where those other shows run annually, semi-annually, uh, in the same place. This is, uh, as far as I'm concerned right now, is a one-off. So it's, it's not going to be branded for annual use. Now, could it happen again? Sure. That's not the intention. Mm -hmm. So what we're aiming for is, you know, the, the fly-in, the, right. the tourists, uh, the people that are coming from overseas. And obviously your local fans that don't want to, well, which, which I've had, I've had a lot too. I would say in the last six months between Facebook DM and people coming up to me at the table, I've, I've had at least eight to 10 people say they weren't going to WrestleCon. And these are your fans that you come to the big event, they come to Legislative, mm -hmm. just because, you know, the, how overwhelming it would be, maybe not only transportation to get there, but just, you know, uh, the time it would take to get there, you know, from where they are based on where they are in Pennsylvania, or where they are in Jersey. So I think this is a, there's a huge parking lot in the back of the Melrose Plaza. They used to store buses back there. Mm -hmm. So no one will have to worry. I mean, I mean, Hopefully there is a parking issue because that means we will have done really well. <laughs> but there shouldn't be a park. <laughs> but there shouldn't be a parking issue. And uh, you know it's easy to get to. And uh, you know so that's why the alternative is there. That's another reason why. Okay, so I mean you're you're basically this is you're you're offering an alternative. Uh, for fans to, and not, not so much a, an alternative to WrestleCon, you're just offering an additional alternative uh, venue, uh, let's see, destination for fans to enjoy the wrestling weekend. Absolutely. Exactly. Ba Baskin Robbins has 31 flavors for a reason, you know? Uh, are they still open? <laughs> I, I guess I would. I would imagine we have we have readers up in Connecticut. Oh no, yeah, we, we got we, we got readers. I think Baskin Robbins is in conjunction with Dunkin' Donuts now. I don't know if they have any more freestanding stores. Well, you don't want to know what we have in Virginia. We've got we've got the moo through. That's how far in the sticks I am. So. <laughs> hey, you, you you live in a state that technically uh, you guys have no professional sport sporting team to call your own. No, and, you know, I'll tell you what, until I, you know, moved down here, there wasn't even an indie wrestling company. Uh, so it's, uh, it's interesting how, you know, where I live, I'm about an hour and 15 minutes from D.C. I work in D.C., mm -hmm. but, you know, these fans here, you find, you know, a ton of Braves fans. You find a lot of people who are Nats fans, obviously, but you get your Orioles fans, and my neighbor's uh, an Orioles fan. So it's weird. We're, like, in this spot where, yeah, you, have, you can go in any direction and find out what team you're going to root for. Uh, as long as you don't have to deal with like you know Philly fans and you know stuff. Oh, like that. that's why I moved. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's what it's funny because it, you you can live in New York, New Jersey, um, Connecticut, and even like uh, parts of like the Poconos and the mountain region of of Pennsylvania, and everybody has one thing in common: the despise of Philadelphia sports fans. Oh, hey, that's uh, that's. <laughs> I guess it's not a rare thing. I was actually, I was in TA last weekend, and I talked to a Phillies fan. Uh, I was wearing a Mets shirt, that so we were talking about David Wright, and I couldn't believe I might have given him an award for being the kindest Phillies fan <laughs> I've ever talked to in my life. So, yeah, I don't know if he was trying to sway me or not, but, yeah, I'd, uh, I'd agree with that sentiment. It, it was probably plotting your death, and you just didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought there was a beam on the top of my head. You're right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, what, what else can uh, you guys, you know, contribute to um, about the show that you guys are doing, um, I'll give you the platform to uh, promote a little and uh, let us in on uh, what, what you guys have in plan in store for the show. Nick, go right ahead. Okay, so uh, we've, we've talked a lot about the concept in the sense that uh, it's going to be ten o'clock to two o'clock on the Sunday morning of WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in a, a, a very uh, very close proximity to where WrestleMania is being held. Uh, we're going to bring in, uh, as host promoters, our goal is to bring in between 8 to 12 talents on our own. And uh, the ballroom, the ballroom, it's, it's a nice size ballroom, holds up to about 375 people. Okay. So it's a little smaller than smaller than the Legends of the Ring ballroom. But, you know, a nice, and obviously that's if everyone's there at one time. You know, people come in and out. So uh, uh, well, we've already got a bunch of vendors on board. So the goal is about 25 to 30 talents for the show. And so it's realistically, if Russell Khan's having 100 guests in a day, 
it's going to be about one third of what WrestleCon has. But you know, it comes uh, at a discount when it comes to price. It comes, it comes at a perk when it comes to being able to, you know, drive up and park mm-hmm. and then bring your stuff down that you don't want to get bent, where you don't have to worry about maybe walking a few blocks to go to where you parked your car or taking the subway. So, uh, yeah, and uh, we're going to be announcing one guest a week for October. We already announced uh, Tully Blanchard and Stan Hansen as the first two guests on our Super Ticket. Super Ticket until December 1st is going to be $100, and that includes admission. So it's going to be a photograph and autograph of the six people we have. And like I said, Tully and Stan are the first two names, and that will include admission. Uh, vendor tables were already uh, pretty close to locked in with vendor tables. I have to talk to uh, the manager to find out if she could add a couple if necessary. And, uh, yeah, that's that's all on my end. Well, we're going to we're look to lock down a headline or two. We're in negotiations with someone. Mm-hmm. It looked like it, it was done, and then uh, now it's not quite done. <laughs> but when we have that, we'll be announcing that too. Okay. And um, is there a... Yeah. Uh, social media presence uh, for this because I was yeah uh, what do you like is are you guys on do you have a page de- uh, dedicated to this on Facebook or do you have a website what's the deal there Chad handle that yeah the the Facebook page and that, that kind of stuff's coming soon but the website's up and running it's m a t m c o n dot com so m uh, look out at the Meadowland Con so m a t m con dot com and uh, we're going to be contributing a lot in terms of what the Two Man Power Trip podcast brings to the table. So uh, we've already had people from Bike TV reach out to us about wanting to cover it. And uh, there's a couple of other uh, journalistic uh, entities that want to come and check it out. So, uh, you know, we're going to use all the resources that the podcast has to, uh, to offer. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, continue to just grow that name as well as, uh, you know, like Nick said, this could be a one off, but, you know, hey. Who knows what the future brings? So the Facebook page is coming soon. Uh, the website is up and running, and the tickets are going to be on sale hopefully in the next 25 hours. Okay, so let me let me ask you just uh, this one question. Do you, you know, you guys were, um, well, Nick, you were part of uh, Boardwalk Beatdown, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, you saw how long, how uh, a year in advance and, and how much uh, – Chad from uh, Standalone Wrestling did as far as advertising uh, for the show. Do you think it hurt you guys that you guys waited so long in the in uh, 2018 to start promoting for this show? Uh, not at not at no, all. It's it's, not, it's, not it's, even it's close. Okay. Yeah, it's still six months out. Chad did a fantastic job promoting the convention, but realistically, I, I don't remember another convention in history that's been promoted over a year out. And uh, he did a fantastic job. And yeah, he did great. Media. Yeah. But, but most most things, uh, you know, may, maybe Cena and The Rock in 2012, you know, booked a year out. But most most things aren't. So I think six months is plenty of time for us to get the word out through mm-hmm. social media, through local promoting, and you know, just just word of mouth. Yeah. yeah. And uh, let me take you back on that. Our, our convention that we did in Richmond last year, which is the second one that we have done in Richmond, we started promoting it in. Uh, I think we announced the first guest in either the end of November, early December, and it was in May. And that was ample enough time. So, you know, no, I don't think that's the case at all. And I will take you back on that. Chad did a very good job of his, uh, his promoting, you know, as far out as he did because he had people stay that deep. So uh, I just wanted to take you back on Nick with that sentiment. Yeah. I mean, we, we had a couple shows uh, des- uh, dedicated to uh, Chad for that. I mean, the guy did an, an un- unreal uh, amount of advertising. And I, I think what his philosophy was is because he was – doing it for the first time. Uh, he wanted to set a precedent, set a brand, so people knew, uh, you know, down the road that this is not going to be a one and done. So, he, you know, he was just trying to establish a brand. You got, you know, companies like Big Event, Legends of the Ring, uh, Chiller, and other conventions that run multiple times a year and have for multiple years. They're not going to advertise a year in advance and that far in advance because they kind of already set a precedence that when they're running and uh, the quality of people they're going to bring. So that's why I was asking you guys about maybe if you waited too long, because you know, you're a first time show. This is, you know, you're not, you're not thinking long term. So, you know, wait was waiting too long, you know, not too long, but waiting uh, six months before the show was that enough time to, to kind of set a precedence of what you guys wanted to do. 
Right. No, I hear you. And hey, listen, I mean, I've reached out to you in the past about the Richmond show. Mm-hmm. And-